So we're going to look at general regions, and there's going to be two types when we begin. So our first type, we're going to use just regular x, y axis. So we're going to have two x values in this first type. <clears throat> and so this region is going to have flat sides. like this and we integrate there's going to be two curves there'll be an upper curve and a lower curve so I'll use y equals f of x as the upper function and the lower function we'll call g of x now these do need to be functions of x so what wouldn't make sense if something was not a function and it had some type of a weird loop like this we, first of all, it wouldn't be able to be written as a function of x, but also if you think about integrating it and filling it up with area, you get some weird double counted area down there if you try to integrate across it. So it is important that you have a function of x so that you don't have any issues of looping around on yourself. All right, so if we want to get the area right here, or not the area, the uh, volume of some surface over top of this region we're still going to do a double integral so we'll just call our function f f of x y the order is important I am doing dy intentionally first the reason we're doing that so the consequence of doing that is that x is the outer endpoints and y's are the inner endpoints and the reason we want y is the inner endpoints because there's two functions so, so the big function is f of y equals f of x the little function is y equals g of x the outer values are just a to b right there so there's a few ways to think about this. You want your outer values, your last values have to be constants. Now it's a little bit more tricky, the rules for the inner ones. The inner endpoints So our inner endpoints can be variables, but they have to depend. So in our case, it's grouped up like this. So the inner endpoints can depend on variables you have yet to integrate. So right here, the outer variable is x. So that means your inner endpoints can depend on x. <clears throat> so inner endpoints can depend on variables yet to be integrated. So in this case, x is the variable we're still going to have integrated. So that's a little bit funky, but if I zoom in so we don't see any other stuff, <clears throat> Just looking in here, I still, I'm going to take a y antiderivative, but coming up, I have an x antiderivative. So that means my endpoints are allowed to depend on x. Allowed to or must? Allowed to. There could be numbers. For example, I could have had a flat, uh, well, not with this original setup, but maybe I could have actually had a flat constant bottom, in which case g of x would be a number. I think we would use the number C before, like C to D. But now I don't have to have a constant function endpoint. So I forget if this is type 1 or type 2, but I think your book labels one of them is type 1 and the other is type 2. I don't have that information. So I won't say which one's type 1 and which one's type 2, but the other type. So this type will have a C and a D 
y value. So there'll be a flat line at C and a flat line at D. And now our region can have a curve on both sides. So there's a left curve and a right curve on the left. Now before I write <coughs> this down, is this left curve a function of x? How would I determine if our curve on the left, this blue curve, is a function of x or not? Vertical line, vertical line test. So here we go, lots of vertical lines that are going to make it fail. So it's not a function of x. It is a function of y. It passes the horizontal line test. So each y value has unique x value output. So there's a function on the left. It's x equals g of y. So that's the left curve. The right curve, x equals f of y. So these are the two curves on the left side and the right side, whereas before we had a top and a bottom curve. So you just kind of turn your head sideways if you wanted, and you'll have a top and a bottom curve. You just reorient your uh, up. All right, so we're going to write the formula down. So it's a double integral. Still want the same big f of x, y. This time we're going to reverse the order. So our C and D, our Y values, we want to do those last. So we're going to go DX, DY, which should be reversed. Yeah, what we had the first time. All right, so right now, write down the four endpoints right here correctly. To give you a little start, the outer are Y's, the inner are X's. So write those down. So let's start with the easier ones. What is the little y value, the bottom y value? That's the number c, and then the upper y value, the number d. Now we go to the x bounds. Is the lower x bound g of y or f of y? I'm looking for the little x bound, g of y, because you want to look closer to the left in this case. You want to get the smaller one, which is on the left. So g of y is small, and then f of y is big. And if we parenthesize, you can look at g of y <coughs> depends on the variable we have yet to integrate. Now, this is a less of a big deal when there's only two dimensions in our region. We're going to go, at some point, and have three dimensions. So your innermost endpoint can depend on your two variables you have yet to integrate. Your middle endpoints can depend on the one variable you have yet to integrate, and your outer endpoints have to be numbers. So I'm just setting you up for the more general case when we get there. So we're ready for our first example. So we're going to use R for the region. So this is not, don't put two uh, vertical lines down on your R because this is not all real numbers. This is the region R. So R is a region bounded by X axis, Y equals X, and X equals one. And here our height function, f of x, y, is 3 minus x minus y. <coughs> so 
So we're going to find the volume of the surface f of x, y under the region R. So on these problems, one of the most important things to understand is your region. So we're going to look at the region very carefully, and we're going to sketch out. There are two equations and the x-axis. So there's really three equations total. What equation does the x-axis correspond to? So the x-axis is the equation of y equals 0. So that's the x-axis. So graph all three, y equals 0, y equals x, x equals 1. Super easy. They're all lines. Be careful about where they intersect. That's definitely going to be important. So we got a triangle. Any questions on that triangle? <clears throat> so let's set it up as the first type. I'm just going to give that a name. I'm going to call it type 1. I'm going to call the other one type 2. Is this type 1, type 2? Let's see if we can write it as type 1. So type 1, there would be two vertical lines and then some curves in between. All right, if I write it as type 1, what's the right vertical line? X equals 1. So that's our big x value are right. Now it's a little bit weird. What's the left vertical line? It's really short. It's actually zero. So I could write this as a type one where it's probably easier to see the curves. So let's think about this as a type one region. So type one there is an a and a b value. A equals 0, B equals 1. And now I need an upper curve and a lower curve. So I'm going to go back to the type 1. Our upper curve and lower curve are functions of x, not functions of y. So I'm going to write down the functions of x for f and for g. All right, upper curve, y equals f of x. What's our f function? X. x. Kind of boring, but it's a line. It's just the line y equals x. All right. Lower curve, zero. zero. It's the line y equals zero. Even less exciting. Just that flat line right there. All right, so let's set up our double integral. So we're going a to b fx gx so I'm just rewriting that volume integral we wrote that was the first integral we wrote down today and we're just filling in the a the b value the f the g function and then the capital f function for our height so a and b 0 to 1 g of x 
that's y equals 0, f of x, y equals x. Our function was 3 minus x minus y. Yeah, 3 minus x minus y. And we're doing dy dx. <clears throat> Strongly recommend when you're starting out, put in your extra order of operations parentheses just to keep you focused on the inner integral. So you can kind of forget the outer integral. So any questions on setup before I start taking antiderivative? So the antiderivative is pretty straightforward. What is the y antiderivative of 3? Three y. What's the y antiderivative of negative x? Negative x y, because x is a number. What about negative y? Uh, y squared over two. This is y squared over two. It's probably the most normal feeling antiderivative. And we're going from y equals zero to y equals x. So that should have felt familiar to the partial antiderivatives you've done before. So that's nothing too special. The only weird thing is when I plug in the endpoints. So we want to pay attention to this. When you see y equals x, now if all I see is y equals x, the question is do I replace x by y or y by x? So these equations are sort of a one-way street. Just like down here, do I replace y by 0 or 0 by y? We know the answer to that one. We're replacing y by 0. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to replace y by x, and I'll write that down. If you use computer science notation, replace y by x, you would actually get I think they would write it something like that. So x is going to replace y by x. Oh, well, let's not write it down. Let's just keep it English. Replace y by x. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I have 3x minus replace y by x. So it's now x times the x we swapped in minus x squared over 2. So what I did there, replace all the y's by x's. Now I'm going to subtract while I replace all the y's by 0. So that one's not very exciting. That's just the regular replace y by 0. And we'll simplify this down. There's not too much. 3x, we have minus x squared minus 1 half x squared. So that's minus 3 halves x squared. I'll keep my parentheses green, keep it consistent. So I'm bringing down my dx, my integral 0 to 1. Now I'm using that in-between line as kind of scratch work right there. I'm not using an equal sign to bring everything else down. So you could kind of lightly cross it out or something like that. I'm just going to leave it there. All right, this integral, super easy. You can give this to Calculus 1 student, and they should be able to crush it. So we'll leave it like this. Now, I want you to go back and rewrite this from the beginning as type 2. So I'll begin type 2. So type 2 has two horizontal lines and two curves. The big one is f of x equals f of y. The little one is x equals g of y. And I'll copy down our triangle. So what is our minimal y value? What is that was c before? So 
So C is zero. Our maximum Y value will be one. Now what I need are two curves. I need a left curve and a right curve. So write down the G of Y and the F of Y. So what curve is G of Y? y. It is Y. So that was kind of nice and easy. Our function, original equation was x equals y. So you solve it for x, it's already solved for x. You solve for y, it's already solved for y. There's no real work to do. Now, f of x, oh, f of x, f of y, does the right curve depend on y? It's constant. What constant is it? One. This is 1. So the x value is always 1. Now we're ready to write out the volume, so I'm just copying this from above. I'm going from C to D. The inner bounds, the little one is x equals g of y. The big inner bound is x equals f of y. So fill in all four endpoints right here. You should have everything you need on the screen. So any endpoint questions with what's on the board? All right, so for this, go ahead and finish the integral. Finish both the inner antiderivative, plugging in the endpoints, and then the outer antiderivative. Get all the way down to a number. I'm going to go back and finish the computation from type 1, and we'll see if we get the same answer. So I'm about to move the screen, so make sure you have your endpoints correct.
hopefully, because I got the wrong answer. Three, six. Still doesn't, still not what I got the first time. The first one I also got one. Oh, I messed up the first one. Hopefully. Similar error, error. Oh no, I did the exact same thing. Wait. That's right. So we should be multiplying. When you took the x times x minus x squared over 2, and it, when you put it to the. What am I doing? Did I add 2? It looks like it. Oh my goodness. Wow. We've got a half minus a sixth. Oh, all right. So there we go. All right, so we get one and one. So it should not matter which type you do. Uh, there are plenty of examples that are only one type and not both types. So you want to be careful. I picked an example that could go either way. So our next example. So the way we write these out in general is you do a double integral with an r underneath. So that means the integral over r, sine x over x, dA, so new terminology, I'm going to use RBB for region bounded by. That'll save us writing a whole lot of region bounded by. So we have x-axis, y equals x, x equals 1. Oh, is that the exact region we did last time? No, it's fine. I think it is. It is. It is, but... Well, the good news is my next example is not the same region. All right, so set this up in dx, dy form. So is dx, dy the first type or the second type? Second. It's going to be the second type. So I'm telling you to set it up like type 2. And again, type 2. Well, this specific example you can look up to type 2. We've already computed all those things. So set it up just like type 2 and attempt to integrate it. So our endpoints are exactly the same. We have a calculus 2 problem on our hands, though. 
What's the antiderivative of sine x over x? Uh, take a guess, ln sine x. You could try it. You could do guess and check, ln sine x. But we take derivative of ln, there's no 1 over x that's going to come out. All right, there's my angry face. You can look at this, but there is no uh, antiderivative in this form. So what could, calculus two won't save you. What could we do differently that we just learned? Do we have to do type 2? No, set it up like type 1 instead. You should get the same answer. Set it up like type 1 instead. You're going to take a y antiderivative first. The y anti what is the y antiderivative of sine x over x? One. Y times sine x over x. Very good. So go ahead and do that. So set it up like a type 1 and actually integrate it and finish this all the way. So on the board, I just have the endpoints copied down. All right, calculus was pretty easy here because our x basically canceled the divide by x. That divided by x was the really tricky part, but when we plugged in x for y, they actually canceled out. Could we assume it's in radians and just say it's 1? Or this isn't radians or degrees, I don't know what cosine 1 is. Oh, oh. It was like yeah. 1 pi. Yeah, so we yeah, you could use the Taylor series for cosine. Plug in one, get the first five or six terms. It's good enough approximation to six or so decimal places. All right, so we could go either type. Sometimes one type is hard, the other type is easy. Our last example, we're going to reverse the order of integration. So I'm going to give you one type, and you're going to turn it to the other type. The tricky part is you need to figure out what region you're working over. So you're going to reverse the order of integration.
right, so you will need to find the region. So our double integral, the outer bound, 0 to 2, the inner bound, x squared to 2x. The 4x plus 2 doesn't matter to the region. Now, just from what I wrote down, is this dy dx or dx dy? So why is it dy? What gave away? Because we're plugging in the x's, so that means your last variable has to be x. So your inner variable has to be y. It would also be crazy if uh, I wrote down here x equals 2x. That should immediately make you very skeptical. x is 2x. That's really weird. There is a single solution to that, which is 0, but that's not what should be there. y equals 2x, much more reasonable for, to be there. All right. Let's go ahead and write all those down. We have y equals 2x, y equals x squared, x equals 0, x equals 2. All right, do your best to reconstruct the region R. And we have type, we have a type 1 region. So I graph y equals 2x and y equals x squared. Now I could graph the full function, the full happy parabola looks like this, and the full line looks like that. Now I don't need all this because there's a few reasons. I stopped here, mainly motivated by my intersections. So I was like, oh, there's a perfect region right here. Where do the x equals 0 and x equal 2 come into play looking at the graph? That's my minimum x value and my maximum x value right here. So that's my min and my max. So this is my x equals 2, and this is my x equals 0. Now there are no vertical edges right here we just come down to a point. So this region could be type 1 or type 2 because there are no straight edges at the end. Question? Y equals 2 will actually erase 2 for x values? Uh-oh. Y equals 2. I think they should intersect when their x coordinates are 2 and their y coordinates are 4. So I haven't written down the type 2 yet. Okay. So yes, when you do write down your type 2, absolutely, the y value of 0 and 4 becomes super important. Yes. All right, so I have the region right here. Now write the type 2 integral. And 4 is important in there. I wonder if that drill is picked up on the microphone. I feel like it'll be loud and prominent. <laughs> okay. 
So my type two integral has the outer bounds as the y's. So my y, minimum y value is zero, max is four. You need numbers for that. I'm just looking at min and max y values. So any questions on the zero, four from our graph? Now what I need for type two, let me write that down, I need two functions, gx dy. So these are x equals, x equals, uh, so our little one is g of y and our big one is f of y. All right, so I need a left and a right. So I'm gonna look back at our region here. I think I'm supposed to use G for the little one. What is a function of Y for the left? Y over two. Y over two or one half Y. All right, how did we get that? Getting that, you're just gonna use algebra. Y equals two X, this is written Y as a function of X, I need X as a function of Y. So, you need X as function of Y. So all we're gonna do is solve for X. Same steps you're doing to invert a function. We're not swapping letters, we're just solving, or it's not swapping variables, we're just solving for the other variable. So I solve for X. 1 half y equals x, and this is our g of y function, 1 half y. And that's the little 1 half y. All right, our other function is, or other equation, y equals x squared. And again, I need x as a function of y. How do I solve for x here? Square root. So our f of y function is square root y. Why did I not use the negative square root y? You may not have been thinking about it, but if I take a square root, I do get plus or minus. I drew the negative square root that would have been the part of the function I didn't actually use over there. So if I was using any part of the left portion of the parabola, I would have gone with the negative version. All right, so this is a example chosen for a couple reasons. One of them is I didn't just take x and y values and swap them. And the functions you had to solve, you'd basically invert your functions. You had to solve for the other variable. So there's quite a bit to do. It really came down to understanding a region. If you can graph your region, you can probably write it as the other type. So on any homework problems or quiz problems where it says change from type one to two, you really need to understand your region. Yes, you are swapping dx and dy, but that's not the same as just taking x and y values and swapping them. If you happen to be integrating over a rectangle, you can do that. But if you don't have a rectangle, you can't just take, your values are not just a, b, c, and d. If you have a rectangle, you can literally swap the values, but as soon as you have functions, you can't just swap. 